ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد بعد ان نقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر رب الشرح صدري ويسر أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي نستغفر الله ربنا من كل ذنب ونتوب إليك ربنا أتنا علما اللهم يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير يا فتاح يا فتاح يا فتاح امين يا رب العالمين الحمد لله we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank him for this beautiful day of Jumu'ah where we come back to him and remember what the Quran has reminded us in, the, in, in, in this book so inshallah um, in my khutbahs I would like to I'd like to go through the last surahs of the Quran the small surahs of the Quran so that we understand them better and also connect with Salah. The ultimate goal of Quran is so that you can have khushur in Salah. And so inshallah in today's khutbah, I'm going to choose, I chose a shortest surah in the Quran which is Surah Al-Kawthar, but the explanation is much longer than I thought it would be. But inshallah I'm going to uh, summarize it, uh, summarize and cut it down as much as I can and get to the main points of this inshallah, just three ayats uh, today. Bismillah begin. Inna a'atayna al-Kawthar. Before we begin, what did this surah talk about? This surah exclusively talks about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today's khutbah is special because today we are going to live with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our the Habibullah, Nabiullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this surah addressing the life of Rasulullah sallallahu and some lessons that we can derive from that. So Allah begins, Inna a'atainaka al-kawthar. Indeed we, we have given you, ya Rasulullah, al-kawthar. The abundance. We have given you the abundance. Let's break it down. Inna means no doubt. There is no doubt about it. Us. Inna. Indeed we. Why is inna used? Inna is used in the in Quran to remove doubt. In language, inna is used to remove doubt. Izala to shak. So when people have doubts in their mind, that doubt is removed by using what? Inna. So Allah saying inna to show that the readers, the listeners, are having some doubt about this. What is the doubt? Allah is saying in this ayah, we have given you, Ya Rasulullah, abundance, a lot of good. And now we as listeners are thinking about this. Is it really? Was the Prophet ﷺ, did he have so much wealth? Was he that rich? What did he have, you know, property? How, the, how what does it mean that he had abundance? Allah is saying first is no doubt. Yes, in fact, we gave him a lot. Inna, and then na to show we, we are the ones, and nobody else would have given this if not us. It's only us who gave this to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So inna, indeed we, a'atinaka, we have given you. A'ta is a word which means, what, what a'ta means is to give someone so much that is beyond their expectation. As a surprise, unexpected thing, it's more than what you deserve. So it's not ata, ata is to give someone just what they deserve. But a'ta, a'ayn al-ta is to give someone more than what they deserve. 
Allah is saying, A'tayna, we have given you. And Allah uses the past tense to show that He already gave you. It's not like you have to wait for it. He already gave you this, this huge abundance. Who is this referring to? You, directly to Rasulullah Wasallam. So the Quran came directly addressing Rasulullah Wasallam, and in extension, it's addressing all of us. So Allah says here, Inna a'tayna ka. We indeed be, no doubt about it, we have given you what? al kawthar al kawthar means a lot. It's a rare pattern in the Arabic language. Kawthar pattern is very rare. And when it's rare, when a rare pattern is used in language, that is to show it's unusually big, it's unusually great. What Allah has given you can't even imagine. You can't even fathom the greatness that the Prophet ﷺ received. And so we see in language al kawthar you know, a woman was asked, okay, uh, is that her son was returning from, uh, from a journey, and that woman was asked, okay, what did your son come back with? What did your son come back with? And the woman says, my son came back with al kawthar not, not kathir, kathir means a lot, akthar means a lot, um, kathra means a lot, but kawthar, that pattern means he came with a lot of wealth, a lot, a lot, you can't even think about it. Right? Al Kawthar. And Kawthar is actually actually used for someone, a leader who has a lot of followers. That guy is Kawthar. He has a lot of followers. So Kawthar has to do with abundance. Now, the language is very really ambiguous. What does this mean to be lot? You no, know, when Allah wants to say something, it's very precise. It says Jannatin Tajini bin Tahrin Ha, they will get gardens and there is reverse law. He's very specific on what people will get. Here Allah is saying abundance. What does that mean? And so Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah, he derives 16 opinions from the Prophet and from the companions of what al kawthar means. Obviously we won't go through all 16 because we have uh, a limited time, but inshallah I chose you know, 6 to summarize everything. So the 6 opinions we'll go through inshallah, if you have time we'll go through 7 as well. So what does it mean we have given Rasulullah al kawthar the first opinion, the first thing the Prophet has given is a river in Jannah. A river in Jannah. And so this hadith narrated in Bukhari, uh, and then uh, what is the Prophet that describes this? He says, I have been given a river in Jannah, and the name of this river is Al Kawthar. And he says, The edges are lined with gold. This river, the edges of this uh, uh, river is lined with gold, and there are pearls and rubies flowing all around, and there is soil. The soil of this, this river smells better than any perfume in the world. The water tastes sweeter than honey, and it looks brighter than the snow. It's whiter than the snow. That's what this kawthar is. That is the first meaning. The Prophet is guaranteed Jannah, and in Jannah he is given an abundance, abundance of water, a huge river that is exclusively for Rasulullah Now I did not share the context of this surah. I'm going to get to it towards the end. Because Allah subhanahu addresses that towards the end, I want to follow the sunnah of the ayat. Moving on, the first one is river in Jannah. The second opinion, and it's from the hadith as well, is that kawthar, indeed we have given you a kawthar, meaning we have given you a, a pool or a pond on the Day of Judgment. So this, this river, it trickles down outside of Jannah, and where the Day of Judgment will happen, there will be a small, a huge pond, actually huge, right? It's we call a pond, but it's going to be huge, almost like a river, and that will be outside Jannah. And this is given to the Prophet Wasallam. So the Sahabas explained that the Prophet Wasallam was sitting with us. And then he just dozed off, right? He just slept. And then, and then he got up while smiling. He was smiling, right? And then his companions asked, Ya Rasulullah, what makes you smile? What makes you laugh? And then the companion says, uh, the Prophet says, I have been given al kawthar I have been given al kawthar And the Sahabas are sort of like, what is al kawthar The Prophet says, do you know what al kawthar is? Al Kawthar is, and the, the Sahaba says, Allah and His Messenger know best. And then the Prophet explains, Al Kawthar is going to be a pond on which my Ummah will rest on the Day of Judgment. My Ummah will take a stop at this pond. And there are cups in this pond. There are cups in this pond that are more than the stars in the sky. That means so many people will come and drink from this pond and one sip that you take from the hand of Rasulullah from this pond, you will never be thirsty for the rest of the day of Jishmi. May Allah make us among those people. That is the drink 
that our Ummah, the Ummah of Rasulullah SAW will be given. And that is a smile. He was very happy to see that a large number of, of his followers will be coming there and drinking from that fountain. And so, and he says there will be more cups than the stars. And then he continues with this hadith. He says there are some people who will drink from that and as they're about to drink, the angels will pull them and throw them away. And the, the Prophet ﷺ being the Rahmatul Alameen, the one who cared for us the most, he will ask, Oh angels, he's from my ummah, why are you taking him away? He's from my ummah. And then the angels say, Ya Rasulullah, you don't know what he did after you left this world. You don't know, he, he said he's a Muslim, but he never followed your sunnah. He never kept up to your teachings. And so this person will be thrown away and he will not be given that, that, uh, that blessing. You know, drinking from the cup of, from the hands of Rasulullah from this cup means it is guaranteeing the intercession of Rasulullah Right? This is the this is what the kawthar means. So Allah says, Inna a'tainak al kawthar. We have given you a pawn on the day of judgment. And you know, the Prophet says in another hadith that how will the Prophet recognize us on the day of judgment? How will he know that you are from my ummah and you're not from my ummah? What is a sign? What is the way you look? Right, the sunnah on the face, on, on your, the way you, you, you walk and talk. But also, the scholars and the hadith mentions that the places where you did wudu, the areas where you did wudu will be shining. Your face will be shining. The water, the water of wudu that touched your arm, as far as it touched your arm, it will be shining on the day of judgment. And that is a sign. And the Sahabas asked Rasulullah Ya Rasulullah, how would you recognize us? And he says, if a person owns a black horse, so he owns a white horse, um, and then there are a bunch of black horses. Can he recognize the white horse from the, the group of black horses? Yes, he can. And the sign is that wudu area will be glowing and radiating. That's why when we make wudu, we should make with this intention, Ya Allah, illuminate my faces and my limbs on the day of judgment so that I can be recognized by Rasulullah I mean, So the first one is river in Jannah. Second one, one is on the day of judgment. The third opinion, inna a'tainak al kawthar. What does al kawthar mean? Kawthar means a large following. That we have given you a large following. That you, Ya Rasulullah, will have a following like nobody else. Your ummah will be the greatest in number and you'll be proud of that. You know, a person, a person who wakes up in the night crying for his ummah, my ummah, my ummah, there is no greater success than listening to this ayah, than this news that your followers will make it to Jannah, you can be in peace. That that is the greatest success, achievement for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? al kawthar a large following. And you know, al kawthar I said, means a lot. So it means a lot of water. It means a lot of cups and all that. Why? Why is it a big body of water? Why? Because the followers are many. When the followers are many, when the people who are going to drink from it are many, then the body of water also has to be big. So they're all tied together. al kawthar means a large body of water, means he will have, Rasulullah will have a lot of followers. And you know the Prophet says, have a lot of children. Increase in, in your progeny, increase your progeny and have a lot of children because I will be proud to see my ummah on the day of judgment covering the horizons. That is what I want and that is what we should all try. And today we see, yes, Muslim ummah is growing, but we have a lot of youth leaving the faith. We have to work on strengthening the iman of these kids so that they don't leave, so we can make, the, make Rasulullah Sassim proud in the Day of Judgment. And so we move on to the fourth opinion. And the Sahab has mentioned the fourth opinion, we have given you al kawthar means we have given you the Qur'an. We have given you the Qur'an. The greatest treasure for Rasulullah Sassim is the Qur'an. Money is nothing, money is not the wealth. But Allah says it's Qur'an. Allah says, huwa khayrun minna yajma'oon. We, what you gather from the Qur'an is better than whatever you can gather. Your time, your moments that you spend learning the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an, understanding and teaching the Qur'an, whatever time you spend with the Qur'an, it says that is better than whatever you can gather in your life. And why? Because Qur'an can bring happiness that now no other thing can bring. When you are sad, when you are in times of difficulties, when you are low, what gives you strength? It's the Qur'an that gives you strength. And we see that this surah is actually, the Prophet is going through tough times in his life. You know what the context of the surah is? I'm going to keep it towards the end, which is what I mentioned right now. The context of the surah is him losing a child. He lost a child. And Allah is saying, Allah is counseling the Prophet This is what Quran does. It brings, and he gets up smiling. 
His kid passed away and the Quran just gave him a smile. That's what Quran does. It brings you happiness. And the first thing we need to do is understand this book. See what's happening and it's not difficult. It's not difficult. This book came for us for, to, to address our hearts, the problems of our hearts. So Allah says, Quran, the fourth opinion is the Quran. Because Quran, also what Quran did, Quran changed hearts. Quran changed hearts. You see, the Prophet ﷺ, one man in Arabia, all he had was the Quran and the entire community against him. What he did changed hearts. Just use the Quran and change the hearts of people, change his own heart, and that's it. That's the revolution that came in the entire world, it's just the Quran. That's what Quran does. Allah is saying, We gave you, Rasulullah, Rasulullah, something that you cannot even fathom. Al Kawthar, greatness, which is the Quran. And we see that Ammar bin Yasir, he goes to his parents, he reads, Waduha, Walayli, Da Saja, they accept Islam. Just the Quran changed them. Leaders of Medina become Muslims. How? Just listen to the Quran. That's it. Quran changed hearts of the people, and that's what that's the power, that's the treasure the Prophet ﷺ had. So once again, the first one was Kawthar is a river in Jannah, pool on the day of judgment. Three is a large following. Four is Quran. Fifth opinion. What is Al Kawthar? We gave you Al Kawthar means we have given you, Ya Rasulullah, an ability to withhold a lot. An ability to deal with a lot. Him being the Prophet of Allah, him being the leader of state, him being the husband of, you know, eleven wives, him being the father, him being a, 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 a businessman, all kinds of things. He was able to manage everything and take everything in and then not burst, not give up. That is a strong thing. That's an ability that Allah Prophet was given. Why? Because he had what with him? He had the Quran with him. Are right? they all linked together? He had Quran with him, and that gave him. And you know, it's very difficult for us to manage our families. It's very difficult for us, for those of you who have business, right? I run an Islamic school. I know how difficult it is. It's very difficult for those of you who maybe like uh, control or uh, like have a bigger family or like have to take care of like a larger thing or take care of this musalla, for example, right? Whatever it is. It takes a lot of time and effort, even if you spend 24-7, it's very difficult to manage it. But yet the Prophet ﷺ was being the Nabi of Allah and leader of state, he was able to do everything to the point that he was even able to take out some time every day to go and visit Fatima radiallahu anha and check upon her, how she is doing, what's happening, right? And he's able to like take care and, and fix uh, uh, you know, uh, the right issues that are happening within, within his family. Right? SubhanAllah, this is Rasulullah So an ability he was given to withhold a lot, not burst out because he was given the Quran. Inna al kawthar. We have given you abundance. And the last thing, the sixth opinion is that Ya Rasulullah, we have given you al kawthar means we have given, we have raised your mention. We have raised your mention. You are always mentioned with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the status that all the Prophet has given. That Jibreel Islam says, he, and the Prophet says, Jibreel came to me and he says, My master and your master said, Why your master separately? Can, couldn't he say our master? No, the way the master is to you is different than the way the master is to me. My master and your master said that I have raised the remembrance of Rasulullah. I have raised the remembrance of Rasulullah. How? Because, Ida dukirta, Ida dukirtu, dukirta mai. Whenever I am mentioned, you are mentioned with me. Whenever Allah is mentioned, who is mentioned right after? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Right? Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, in the adhan, Ashadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah. What an honor. Inna a'tinaka al-kawthar. Isn't that an abundance good that the Prophet has given? We see, while standing in salah, we praise Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Rahim. While sitting in salah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majeed Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majeed We praise Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam In the Quran, every time Allah is mentioned, who is mentioned with him? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So you have the disbelievers harming and hurting him in so many ways on the other side, you have Allah, the Prophet mentioned with Rasulullah Allah and, and, and Rasul mentioned together. That, that whole thing is nothing compared to what Allah has given me. 
So Allah is saying, Inna a'atayna al kawthar. Ya Rasulullah, we have given you al kawthar, abundance and abundance you can't even imagine. So now what should you do? Ayah number two. What should you do? Salli li rabbika walhamd. Salli li rabbika walhamd. You should pray for the sake of your master and sacrifice and be generous and do good to others. You know, after mentioning Kawthar, Allah gave you this, Allah gave you a river, Allah gave you a large following, Allah gave you a Quran, Allah gave you this. What are you expecting? Allah gave you this, so you should do what? You should be thankful. Isn't that the expected <coughs> word? That your mom gave you a plate, you know, a plate full of food, delicious food. When you see that food, what do you do? If you're a decent person, what should you do? At least you will say, thank you mom, you're the best. Your dad paid for your tuition fee. What will you do? At least the least thing you can say is, thank you dad, you're the best thing. You're the best human being ever. At least the least thing you can say is, thanks. So Allah has given us so much. Allah has given Rasulullah Sallallahu so much. So he's told to say what? Shukr. How do you do shukr? Salah. Salah is another word for shukr. That's why when we begin, Allah what the first thing we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You think about your day from Fajr till now, Ya Allah, you have given me so much. I'm, my heart is beating. Right? I'm breathing. Alhamdulillah, things are happening. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All, all praise and thanks to you, Ya Allah. So you should do what? Fasalli. You know, a lot of times parents, when they're teaching their kids, they say, if you don't pray, you'll go to Jahannam. You know, for every time you miss salah, a snake will come and bite you. That's the kind of thing that we are, uh, the kids are taught. No, don't terrify the salah. That's not what salah is supposed to be. You're supposed to have this relationship with Allah subhanahu of gratitude, of appreciating Allah, uh, thanking Allah. Alhamdulillah, fasalli li rabbik, ya Allah, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. So the Prophet is told, fasalli li rabbik. So you should pray for the sake of your master. Li rabbik, why is rabbik added here? What Allah is saying is that, look, Ya Rasulullah, and Allah is extending that to all of us. You will go uh, through a lot of difficulties in your life, ups and downs and all kinds of thing, things will happen in your life. No matter what happens to you, when, when it's time for salah, you put everything aside and submit your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forget everything, Allah will take care of your concerns. You will just need to focus on your salah. And you go through the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Go to the seerah of Rasulullah What do you see? Islam is starting. There's no one, there's no one who has accepted Islam. What is the Prophet told, this, told to do? Pray. And then Islam goes and things are getting very, very difficult. People are being persecuted. What should you do? What's the command? Pray. And things become catastrophic. He loses his uncle. His, his wife is gone. And there's no light. Everything is dark. And what's the Prophet told to do? Pray. Fatih comes. Right? People are accepting Islam. Islam has flourished. And everybody says, what should you do? إِذَا جَانَ صُرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدُخُلُنَ فِي دِينَ اللَّهِ فَاجَا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَالسَّلَامِ Pray to Allah. Tasbih of Allah. Throughout his life, no matter what situation you are in, you need to take out time and connect with Allah because if your prayer is good, everything else will be taken care of. You know, salah actually means, you know, literally in, in Arabic, salah actually means, you know, there's a cane, when the cane is bent, then you soften that cane to straighten it. Right? That's what salah is. Salah is to like straight, soften something and, and straighten it. A camel that is about to deliver a baby is called salah. The bones is called salah because the bones, the bones of the camel have to soften so that it can expand and get the baby out. Right? That's why it's called salah. Salah has to do with softening and straightening. That's what salah has to do. Right? So when we come to pray, a musalli is called a musalli because he softens his heart and straightens himself. He softens his heart and straightens himself. He understands that there are hard things inside him. There's jealousy, there's arrogance, there is you know, greed, all kinds of things, there's, there's anger, all of these things. You can't let, you know, you can't let go of that person. You, you, know, you cannot forgive that person. There's so much happening inside you. But you come, listen to the Quran, listen to what's happening, you soften and you bend yourself and change. That's what salah is supposed to be. You know, salah is linked, the same word uh, is used in the Quran for burning in hell as well. Salah, if you go to the different roots, same word, it can be used for burning in hell. So the connection is that if you don't soften yourself in this dunya and change your ways, then you will be softened in the hereafter in Jahannam. 
Right? May Allah not make us among those people. You're going to be experiencing some form of salah in this dunya, if not in this dunya, then in the hereafter. So moving on, Allah says, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرُ And what else should you do? You should do nahar. Nahar is to slice an animal, right? To, to do qurbani, right? Qurbani, same word, right? Nahar. It also means to clean something, to be generous. Right? It links to the, the Sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salam. You should do what? فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرُ These are the two things the Prophet is told to do. That you should pray and sacrifice. And, and what's the last ayah? Allah says, إِنَّ شَانِيَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْدَرُ إِنَّ شَانِيَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْدَرُ It says, indeed, verily, your enemy, your enemy, he is the one who's cut off. Your enemy is the one who's cut off. And what does that mean? Shania, Shania is someone who hates you, an enemy who hates you and he feels good when you bleed. Right? It's, it, it, it comforts him. It, it, he feels so good when you are in, in a difficult situation. So Allah says, your enemy is the one who's cut off. And what's the context of this surah? Now we get to the context of this surah. That when the Prophet ﷺ, his son, his son, there's different opinions, Abdullah or Qasim or Ibrahim, we don't know who it is. But one of his son passed away, uh, the enemy of Islam, Abu Jahl, and this other opinion saying to somebody else, Abu Jahl, he goes out and saying he's Abtar, the Prophet is cut off, he's Abtar, he's Abtar. What does that mean? That Abtar is used for someone who does not have sons to carry on his lineage. He only has daughters left, and you know, he's cut off, meaning his name will be cut off, he will, his, lineage, his, his name will not go forth further than this. So he started celebrating and, and telling people that he's Abtar, he's Abtar. Now who comes to the defense of Rasulullah Allah Himself reveals an ayah. In Nashani Aka Wal Abdari, your enemy, he is the one who's cut off, not you. Not you. You see, losing a child is the most unbearable thing for any father. You know, you can lose money, you can recover. You can lose health, you can recover. But losing your children, if you think about losing your children, you know, you, you will die. You will paralyze. Something will happen. People, you know, lose their mind when they think of losing their children, when they actually lose their children. The Prophet وسلم, he buried six of his children with his own hands. Six children, imagine. Right? All of his sons, uh, all of his kids passed away during his lifetime except Fatima radiallahu anha. And he went through a lot and the Prophet is sad. And now what comes to console him? Quran is revealed. And you know Quran, look how the Quran begins. The ayah, this surah, this surah is revealed. He doesn't begin saying, don't worry, Rasulullah, yes, you lost your child, don't worry about it. Allah changes the topic. Ya Rasulullah, forget that. Look what I gave you. Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. I gave you al kawthar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Inna shaniya ka huwa labatar. He changes the topic completely. He's changed, he, he, he wants Rasulullah to look at the things that you have. You know when you are ungrateful, when you think about only problems, you will never see the good side. The Prophet is told, look at what I gave you. What I gave you, that, that is enough for you. And you know what is kawthar means? One of the meanings I said. Kawthar is large following. This is amazing. Large following, right? A big ummah. A lot of people. So what the Prophet ﷺ is told, what's the purpose of children again? Why do people have children? So that they can carry their message forward. They can carry the legacy forward. Now the Prophet ﷺ is told, Ya Rasulullah, don't worry. So what, you, your son passed away, I am giving you a large ummah. They are going to be your kids. They are going to follow your legacy. They will make you proud. Allahu Akbar. They will make you proud, Ya Rasulullah. Don't worry about it. Inna a'atayinaka al-kawthar. We gave you al-kawthar. You see, Ibrahim asked for dua and he asked for his children. Allah gave him. Right? His children. And the Prophet said, Ya Rasulullah, I'll give you much more than that. I'll give you children. That will last, outlast you, outlive you, and make you proud. You now, when you and me follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you live, when you say Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you follow his name, you are actually making your dad proud. Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I will make you proud. I will live up to your, your, your expectations. This is what we're doing. This is the context of the Surah. That this is why when he got up, he got up with a smile. I have been given, have been given a kawthar. This is a kawthar. Say, your enemy is cut off. You know, they're thinking of cutting you off. They are cut off. They will go away. Their families, you know, the Prophet had nothing with him. He only had Quran, that's it. They had influence. They had power. They had wealth. They had everything. Yet they are jealous of Rasulullah. They are trying to go against him. Allah saying, don't worry. You will live. You will live past them. It's time for fresh. And they will pass away. And you will live forever and ever. You know, today, today there's an effort made. There's an effort made across the globe. 
to exterminate the Ummah of Rasulullah Whether in China, in Kashmir, in Myanmar, wherever it is, around the world, people are trying to you know, do this, they harm Rasulullah and exterminate the, the Ummah of Rasulullah But you see, now nothing can happen. Because if, if Islam was successful when there was only one man, then you know Allah is promising that today don't worry about it. The Ummah is given a message that you guys don't worry about it. You need what? You need to focus on salah and sacrifice, and you need to change hearts of the people, and that's it. That's it. If that is there, inshallah, we can guarantee that their will be cut off. Their influence will cut off. Their wealth will be cut off. Their means to guidance will be cut off. They will not come to guidance. That's what Allah wants from us. Just to conclude on this surah, Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Indeed, we we have given you Rasulullah an abundance good al kawthar. Asalli li Rabbika wadha. So you should pray to Allah and sacrifice. Inna shani akahu al abtar. Very your enemy is the one who's cut off. And you know the last meaning of al kawthar is that Amrul Alim. The Prophet is given a great accomplishment. He is given a great accomplishment. What is that? If you see in, time, in terms of change that the Prophet brought, the Quran brought in all fronts, whether in political uh, you know, sphere or economical sphere or social, in all fronts there is a change throughout. Right? In just 23 years, any, any revolution you can think about in history, takes decades upon decades, if not centuries, to change. But you see the Prophet in his life, he saw the revolution, and the, the, the very person who, pro, who brought this idea lived up and saw this revolution. You see these people in the past, Karl Marx, all these other people, they just brought this idea. But they're on their graves, and the revolution happens many, 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 many years ago, and they don't see it. The Prophet when he came with his message, within 10 years actually, you can see the change happening. He saw the political change completely. That tribalism went and is only one God. You have economical change. The economy is surrounded by, surrounded around idol worshipping. And that was removed and economy completely shifted. And you see social change. The way men and women interact, the way they eat, the way they talk, the way they walk, every single thing changed to the point that in less than 10 years, the followers of this, this person, this, the person who prophesies this, the, the followers of, of this person are able to give up their life just because they, are, they want to fulfill that, that idea. And it takes a lot of time for someone to change, for a, for a society to change in critical numbers and give up their lives to live up to that, to that dream. And so here we have Rasulullah in 23 years is able to change completely and that, that 23 years is al kawthar that, that effort was so much that it is still resonating with us today. That is al kawthar Right? Amr al And so all the Prophet did was focus on the hearts. Today, we need to spend time focusing on our hearts, to revive our hearts, and focus on the hearts of our children. Preserve their iman. Send them in good places where they can revive and preserve their iman. This is what we want. We don't have to go out and rally and do all kinds of, all kinds of crazy things because the Ummah is in bad state right now. The Ummah is in bad state, and that is because we have turned away from the Quran. And anytime you see people, anytime you see we hold on to the Quran and Sunnah, we are victorious. And anytime this Ummah turns away from Quran and Sunnah, they are humiliated. And we see in Bani Israel talked about in the Quran, we see, oh, it's them. So poor, poor guys, it's them. Look how they are humiliated. That's the state of our Ummah today. We are humiliated because the Sunnah of Allah is when people turn away from the book, when people turn away from the teachings. Allah says, if you turn away, Allah will bring a nation that is better than you, and they will not be like you. And that is the sunnah of Allah, that they are punished. A nation who turns away from his book, they are punished. Today we need to go back and hold on to the sunnah and the Quran, of, of, uh, Quran and then we will see the change happening within ourselves, and that will resonate throughout the community. So just a concluding point on this, the heart of this surah is the second ayah. Pray and be generous to people. Pray and be generous to people. If you do that, what's going to happen? 
You're going to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're going to thank Allah. And you are going to be given abundance. Allah will give you abundance good if you just focus on these two things. And lastly, He will take care of your enemies. Don't worry about it. He will take care of your enemies. You focus on your prayer. That is what the legacy. This is a surah, short surah, but powerful message. Right? We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the shafa'ah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us a proud ummah, the proud children of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we make him proud on the day of judgment. And that we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, takes care of our enemies. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens Islam and that he humiliates and destroys the mushrikeen around the world and give izzah to Islam. عباد الله يرحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه وعلى نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تسمعون